Hi everybody, it's Mike from 1614. If I was to say what was the most common question that was ever given to me, it was, what in the world do I eat? And I'm gonna answer that question right now with an equation, four plus one equals five. I'll see you in a few. Hi everybody, it's Mike from 1614 Fitness. Answering that monstrous question, what in the world am I supposed to eat? We're gonna talk about that right now. So I've been doing this fitness thing for 15, 16 years, I guess. And truly the most common question that people give to me is this, Mike, just tell me what to eat. Or this is a good one too. They'll look up on our, our, our rack of supplements and proteins and things of that nature and I'll go, all right, look, Mike, I know right there, I know the secrets up there. Come on, give it to me. And these are guys who've been working out and gals who've been working out for years. And they're literally pointing up on our rack of supplements and they say, give me the secret. There is no secret. There's absolutely no secret. Let me show you a secret. Those items that I just referred to, supplements, that's short for supplemental. Those things are intended to supplement your diet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But there is no secret. The reality is it's all about life-changing decisions. And that's exactly what this equation, four plus one equals five, is all about. Yeah, I'm gonna simplify nutrition and eating into that simple equation, and let's start right now. So, let's think about it. Ultimately, what is the secret? We put food in, we exercise by taking food out, and we end up with our body. So, my body really is made up of two very important things, what I eat, and what I do with my body. Those two things come together to give me my body. So if I wanna change my body, I need to change what I put into it and or how I exercise. I feel silly doing that, but ultimately that's the truth. All right, so that being said, I explain that to people and they go, okay, great, that makes sense, so tell me what to eat. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all, and here's why. These fad diets have been around for 100 years, and they're great at making money, and I'm not so great at making money, but I'm pretty good at helping people change their body. Those diets tell you what to eat. You can't be told every day what to eat. If I tell you to eat cabbage all day, every day, and drink water, I guarantee you you're gonna lose weight like a champ. I also guarantee that you're not gonna be happy with me, and you're not gonna do it for more than a couple days. So me telling you what to eat simply doesn't work. We've gotta figure some things out. So let me start this equation off by telling you a story. This story is about my buddy, Doug. A long time ago, I worked in corporate America and I'm sitting at my desk and this bang on the door. I look up and Doug comes in. I say, hey Doug, what's going on? Honest to heavens, this is what he said. He says, boss, keep your eyes noticed. I'm fat, been fat since I was a kid. In fact, I went to fat camp. Fat camp didn't work, so guess what? Still was a fat kid, now I'm a fat adult. I said, Doug, you're not fat. I'm a husky then, regardless of what you are, what can I help you with? He says, listen, I know you do all this fitness stuff. Even before I started the gym, I was known as a fitness guy. He says, can you help me? I said, sure buddy, I sure can. At the time in corporate America, I was teaching a finance class where I helped people save their money, spend more efficiently, be more aware of where their money was going. In that class, I had people write down everything that they spent their money on, which is exactly what I did with people who were trying to eat better. So that being said, I reached under my desk and I grabbed him one of these little diary things. I threw it to him, I says, Doug, write everything down that you eat. Everything that goes in your mouth, write it down. Everything, now get out of my office. He grumbled and gruffed and stomped out. Three, four, five days later, I can't remember. Bam, 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 I look up, there's Doug. He walks in, he throws this diary on my desk, and it looks like it had been to Beirut and back. Bombed, ripped, torn, blown up, shot, everything. I go, well, sit down. It looks as though you truly have taken this diary everywhere. And I start reading it. And I'm reading it. And it didn't say one Cheeto or a bag of Cheetos. It said 14 Cheetos. And it, it said I drank one beer, two beer. Then it got sloppier, so I knew he was telling me the truth. True story. And he did a great job. He says, all right, great, now what's the secret? I go, great, here's the next thing. I reach under the desk way 100 years ago. We use books, not Google, gaggle, and all those other things. I say, here, bud, I need you to take this book, take everything that you're eating right now, and quantify them. What's that mean, boss? I said, buddy, I need you to, to figure out how many calories you're taking in 
every day. Then I need to figure out how many grams of protein you're taking away. Every day, fat and carbohydrates, and that's it. I need you to go back and quantify all these days, and as we move forward, I need you to quantify those moving forward. And he says, well, don't you want me to change? Absolutely not. I don't want him to change. And the reason for not changing is simple. I want to know what's wrong. When a mechanic fixes your car, mechanic shirt, when a mechanic fixes your car, they need to get in the, open the trunk or open the hood. It could be in the trunk. I don't know. It could be a Volkswagen. Open the hood and look at it. Figure out what's broken. Alternator, starter, whatever. Then they can fix it. I need to get under his hood to figure out what's wrong. I said, listen, take a week, quantify everything, give me numbers, and come back and see me. So he did. I realized very clearly that Doug was eating poorly. Not only was his caloric intake way high, but it was soft, meaning they weren't calorically dense. Uh, dense cal calories would come from maybe vegetables, egg whites, lean meats, things of that nature. Low calories, high nutrition value, as opposed to high caloric intake, low nutrition value. We'll call those soft foods. He had a ton of soft foods, very, very little dense foods, and from an exercise perspective, he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't going to a gym, he wasn't walking, he wasn't actively playing a sport. He was working and going home and doing not much of anything. So, let's change our view here a little bit. Let's take Doug and put him in this equation. His food, or his four, combined with what he was doing, very little, gave him that body, okay? Very simplified, I know, this is very simple. So that was his lifestyle and it gave him that body. He says, okay, great, so now what do we do? I say, if you want to change this, I'm gonna use a C word again, if you want to change that five, you've gotta change preferably both of those, but at least one of those. We gotta make change. I said, let's do this. Let's knock off 300 calories a day. Let's knock off 300 and I shared with them how we we're gonna do that. I made change, 300 calories. I said, and listen, soon I would like to see you make change in your exercise world. He says, well, what if I go where you go? I go, that'd be great. At the time, next to 1614 Fitness, the greatest gym I've ever seen in my life, high energy. Thank you guys. High energy in Newark. I said, come with me. We'll get you doing cardio. 15 minutes a day, three days a week. So we reduced his calories. We increased his activity level which in turn will change his body. So he says to me very excitedly, oh my goodness, when is this gonna change? When will this change occur? Well, here's something that's pretty neat. I've read study after study. Typically when people make a life change, such as Doug, it takes 30 to 40 days to see the difference. When people join a gym, Typically, they stay 20 to 30 days before they bail. So in other words, when those guys do those New Year's resolutions, they join in, in January, they go about 19, 18, or 17, 18, 19, 20 days, and they go, this isn't working, they bail. Well, unfortunately, they bailed about 10 days before their body is going to make change. I said, Doug, give it two months. I thought for sure it would happen before that, but I go, give it two months. So he did. And we came back and revisited that. His, his book was very thorough. He did indeed reduce his calories by 300-ish. I'm going off memory, so forgive me, but he reduced this number, he manipulated that number, and he indeed lost. Now, why did I have him write it down? Well, it's two reasons, really. I said we need to figure out what's wrong by getting in the hood, so that was important. But also, I'm a firm believer I can help somebody achieve long-term success as opposed to a fad diet quick fix that won't last. I think I can help somebody have long-term success if we modify their current eating habits as opposed to completely reshaping everything. If I've got a vegetarian and I'm going to ask them to eat lean chicken, it's a train wreck. That's ridiculous. I would much rather see the eating habits of a client, modify it gradually as opposed to just scrambling everything up and changing everything. That, I think, is a, rec is a recipe for disaster, whereas here, I think we've got a very good chance of success. All right, so let's get back to things. So we lowered his calories by 300. We increased his, his activity level. His body changed. I said, all right, buddy, it's time to do and make another move. He, he goes, okay, I'm assuming we're going to lose more calories, right? I said, mm, we're going to change your calories. Remember a few minutes ago I mentioned soft calories versus dense calories? I said, all right, bud, now the real work begins. You need to eat 
like an athlete. He looks at me and goes, boss, do I look like an athlete to you? Yeah, you are an athlete. You're moving your body, aren't you? You're trying to make your body perform, aren't you? That's what an athlete does in my world. Doesn't mean you're on TV, doesn't mean you're in the Olympics, but you're an athlete and you need to eat that way. So we went over the exercise. You go, take a look at this. Take a look at this sliced lunch meat. Look at the calories there. What if we get rid of that and what if you decide to make some lean chicken breast Sunday and bring them in with brown rice? Same calories, but a lot denser by doing it yourself and probably more financially sound as well. He did that. It took work. It took effort, which a lot of people aren't necessarily willing to do, but he was. So he did. And you know what? We revisited him again. He lost more weight. Then he says, what's next? So then we gradually bumped up his cardio. So we went from 15 three days a week to 20 three days a week to 24 days a week to eventually he started lifting weights. Long story short, his exercise, we, we lost, we reduced calories, we traded in calories, we made additional adjustments. So by the time this story was finished, he was eating cleanly. I'm gonna say all the time, but I'm gonna give you a wink, and I'll get back to that in a second. But he was eating cleanly all the time, working out very aggressively, and his body, he dropped 65 pounds. This is the guy who assured me Fat Farm wouldn't work, doctors his mother sent him to wouldn't work, and everything he tried wouldn't work. I understood, but I truly believe in my heart of hearts that the body is a mathematical equation. Now understand, if we've got an illness, or we're taking drugs, we got side effects, that's a whole different animal. But if things are working, I hate to say the word correctly or normally, this equation is gonna work a lot more times than it fails. Truth be told, I've never done it with a client that it didn't work. Because isn't that the basis? That's our food coming in, that's our food coming out, and that's what's left. If we manipulate these two variables, the end result is going to be different. All right, so let's go back to that wink wink when I said Doug ate well all the time. If you think for a second that I don't enjoy happy hour and wings and pizza, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. People look at me and they go, oh, you're the fitness guy. You eat cardboard and broccoli all the time. I do eat my share of broccoli. I've never eaten cardboard. And everybody feels guilty. They always walk up to me and they go, dude, I had a piece of pizza the other day. I'm like, dude, I don't care, I did too. It's Friday night, by the way, and I'm gonna have some pizza and some fun stuff, probably wings. But that being said, Doug ate perfectly all the time. All, all the time is treat your body like a temple Monday through Thursday. On Friday, treat it like a carnival. And then get right back on the wagon again. We can have a good time. I'm gonna tell one more, one more Doug story, all right? He was going away. He was going away and it was going to be a very good time. Doug was excited to go, but he was also very committed to what was going on here. And he sat in front of me and he says, boss, I'm really worried. I'm going to wreck things. Well, first of all, a year is made up of 52 weeks. He's going away for one weekend. He had changed his life, so the exception was now something totally different. His rule was eat poorly. His exception was to eat cleanly. He flipped that around where his Normal was eating clean, his exception was eating poorly. That's a good equation in my world. So he went away for the weekend and he was stressed out. He comes back and he says, I gotta weigh in, man, I'm so freaked out. I said, okay, let's get on the scale. True story, he got on the scale, he lost two pounds. He was freaking out, he said, well, how has this happened? And we'll talk about how that happens in another one of our episodes when we talk about working out and metabolism and how we truly change the engine that runs our body, metabolism. We have that, we'll get it out very quickly, but when that happens, that's how that happened. He'd gotten his metabolism revved up so highly that when he was eating poorly for a weekend, it really didn't do any damage. As long as he came back and got his nose to the grindstone on Monday, everything was fine. And that's exactly what happened. So listen, when we need to eat well, keep it simple. Four plus one will always equal five. And I purposely made the biggest variable food. That is the single most important one. Being a gym guy, people automatically assume that working out, working out, working out, working out is most important. Well, it is very important. And from a business perspective, it's crazy important. And I encourage you to come down and join our gym. But not really. The most significant thing to changing your body, I believe, is changing your food intake. And certainly, the working out part is huge as well. But you gotta put those two together. The problem we have as people is we don't want to take the time to write this down. That's the trick. 
And here's my residual story. I wish I had a calculator. I screwed up, I should have brought one. But I'm gonna tell you a story. This goes to all women. Women, I got a secret for you. Men, they lie all the time. Here's what I mean by that. When I do speaking engagements, I often bring up this equation we talk. And I say to the folks, all right guys, this is just to the guys. Who has a beer at night? Nobody raises their hand. All right. Who has just one? They all raise their hand. Who has more than that? Nobody says anything. They're lying. They have more than one. I know it for a fact. But let's talk about that. If you have a light beer, we're just going to keep it simple, 100 calories. You have one of those a week. That's 700 calories a week. You multiply that 700 times 52 weeks a year, that's a whole lot of calories that you weren't really counting for. Truth be told, when we eat chips, we're probably eating a lot more than we think. When we have pretzels, we're probably eating a whole lot more than we think. The reason I think it's significant to write it down, I'm a big person, I'm a big fan of writing it down because I believe it comes real. But also, you're gonna realize what is wrong here. When Doug was going through his process of figuring this out, he was a couple days into it. He walked in and threw it on my desk again and says, I don't need you anymore, boss, I figured it out. I go, what do you mean you figured it out? He goes, I eat terribly. He didn't realize that that four was a mess. That four was an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It was a distorted number. He didn't realize what he was eating. We don't, we just grab, we graze, we pick things up, we eat them all the time. Until we understand what we're eating, we can't fix it. And I am a firm believer, you have to take your current diet and modify it as opposed to changing everything. So my suggestion, write it down. Figure out how many calories you're taking in. Figure out how many grams of protein. Figure out how many carbs. Figure out how many grams of fat. And then once you do that for a week or so, then go back and figure out, are these dense calories? Probably not. Are they soft calories? Unfortunately, probably. Once we then can flip those and we get a magic number that is our magic caloric intake, we have done what so many people have tried so hard to do, and that's take ownership and control of our body. People say it all the time, gosh, I wish I could make my body do what I want. Well, truth be told, you can. I have so many clients that know, Mike, if I take in my 2,600 calories a day and I do my hour and a half of cardio a week, my body's gonna be right where I want it. And they know, Mike, during the summer, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna do whatever I want in the summer and my body's gonna change a little bit. But come fall, I'm gonna go back to that. It's because they know their caloric intake. And that caloric intake will change as we grow older, as we become less active, I understand that. But if we understand what makes our body tick, then we can make it change, all right? So real quick, in wrapping things up, write down, write down what it is that you eat. Understand what we're putting in our mouth. I talked to a gentleman the other day, he's struggling with diabetes, and his blood was terrible, absolutely terrible. And I was frustrated with him. He got up two days in a row and it was over 200. And I was frustrated. I said, why? Why would you not fix that knowing that was a problem? And he started talking, I was in a rant. I said, listen, stop, stop. And that was wrong, I probably should let him talk. But I was frustrated. I said, you can't control the weather, you can't control your wife, you can't control your car, your job, your work, but you know one of the very few things you can control? You can control what you put in your mouth. You have control of that number. Don't give that up. Understand what we're putting in our mouth. And then take a look. Take a look at our cardio. And I'll spend a second here on cardio. Understand what you're really doing. At the gym, I often see people on, a, say, an EFX, cruising along, cruising along. And this person may have done that same move along three days a week for eight years. Well, your body's going to change to a point and then it's going to stop changing. You always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. I heard that somewhere before. Think it. You always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. You always do these things. You're always going to get that. So if we break this one down into a more specific unit, if I do cardio three days a week on an EFX, okay, great. I challenge you, take a look at the re readout. How many strides are you doing in a 20 minute period? How many miles are you going? Take a look at how many strides you do. And then challenge yourself. I just realized I just did 3,000 strides. Okay, next week what if you do 3,500 strides? Because now what you've done is impacted that equation yet again, which is gonna force that to change as well. So, understand what you're putting in your mouth, understand what activities you're doing, 
and realize that that has all the influence in the world in changing what your body does every day. Listen, I hope that helped. Four plus one always equals five, no matter how you shake it. If you've got any questions regarding eating, working out, or just having fun, give us a call at 1614 or check us out on Facebook or the web. Thanks again for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you again, and I will see you at the gym.